Hello and welcome to Power Encounter. We're so glad to have us have you with us on the program today. We're all excited. My name is Cindy Biondi. I'm a healing evangelist. Uh, and I have my guest here, Lisa Henselman. Hi, Cindy. It's so great to be here. It's so fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. I love this format. It was fantastic. This is kind of a just girls talking and, nice. uh, you know, it, we bring in guests. As you know, if you've seen Power Encounter before, we bring in guests uh, who uh, have had the Lord touch their lives. Because our real goal is for all of you to know out there that the Lord loves you. That, that, that Jesus died for us, that he's risen again, that he's interceding for you, that he loves, mm. he heals, he delivers, he loves you, he knows, he knows your name, he knows where you live, he knows uh, every tear you've shed. And so uh, we love to actually um, sh share testimonies and experiences uh, with people like Lisa. Um, and so we're going to be just talking with Lisa about her testimony uh, yeah. tonight and um, all the great things she's going to have to share. So buckle up. Uh, it's always exciting to be uh, to be uh, working with the Lord. So I, I can't, oh my goodness, he's Absolutely. taking me on so, so many exciting journeys. Sure. And I know he has too for you, Lisa. And uh, mm -hmm. Lisa and I have known each other for a while. And whenever we get together, we just talk, 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 talk. Because uh, both of us have had all these awesome experiences it's with true. the Lord. Right. And um, we just love sharing it. All the things that are even happening today around the world mm -hmm. and, and the things she and I both go into Haiti right. and we've seen miracles and got to see oh so many awesome things there and and so we both abroad and uh, here locally mm -hmm. we have uh, gotten to see God's hand move in great power right. we want to share that with you tonight so Lisa um, let's start at the beginning let's start at the okay. beginning I would love to hear I haven't, I haven't even heard your whole testimony you know what and I was just thinking about that I said I was just thinking you know out of all the time that we have spent together. Yes. Uh, I don't think I've ever shared no. uh, my testimony. We're just like two little magpies. We're right? so talking it's about true. Talking. It's so true. I can't wait. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank Absolutely. you for having me here uh, this evening. It's a joy. It's an honor. And uh, I just always enjoy my time with you. So this I'm is, the same this is way. fun. Really fun. <laughs> so when I was asked a couple of months ago mm -hmm. uh, to come on and, and uh, was given very a very broad yes. canvas of you know talk about whatever you want to talk right. about right whatever God uh, lays on your heart well and I really feel like God has laid two very specific things on my heart mm -hmm. uh, and I just can't shake them so I'm just going to go with that awesome. because it's what's been rolling around in my mind it's within what's on my heart wonderful and um, I just really feel like somebody out there needs to hear that no one is ever beyond the point of redemption through oh, Jesus Christ. That's so true. Um, no matter who you are, no matter what you have done, that's right. God's grace is sufficient. It covers it. It's bigger than that. So, so that was the one thing that just kept rolling mm -hmm. through my head because I've been there. I've gone through that of um, in my own life with uh -huh. sin in my own life and making horrible decisions and and being able to know that God loves us. So and how did you find out about Jesus? So how did I find out about Jesus? Uh, well, um, I was raised in an amazing Christian home. Oh, uh, how wonderful. Very loving, mm. very, um, I mean, we were at church all the time. <laughs> we were at church whenever the doors were open, and we were at church when the doors were not open because my you had a key. Well, basically, yes. So my grandparents uh, cleaned the church. Oh, fun! Uh, in, after they had retired, they uh -huh. they cleaned the church, Aww, and my sweet. mom worked in the office. Okay. And so we were it's a there affair. all the time. Yes, That's fun. it was a family affair, and we were very, very, very involved. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we just did a home remodel, and I've been going through old. 
old things and I just found my baptism certificate oh, and it was fun. date well I'm not going to tell you the date but right. uh, I was seven years but you old were young <laughs> I was seven years old oh, and I baptized remember at seven. How wonderful. baptized at seven um, asked Jesus into my heart probably when I was five or six mm. but really knew what it meant at mm. age seven and what does it mean to ask Jesus into your heart oh I think at that young age, mm -hmm. um, hopefully at that young age, there's not a lot of sin and right. yucky stuff already that right. you're having to ask for forgiveness for. Right. But just that realization that Jesus is your very best friend. Mm. God is there with you. He's walking with you. That's He's right. living in you, right? That's right. So, um, so at that age, that's what that meant. Right. And then I remember I was probably maybe eight or nine years old uh -huh. being at a, uh, it was a Royal Ranger Rama. Oh, I okay, love Okay, do you Royal remember Ranger. those? I okay. do. <laughs> so I grew up in Missionettes. My brother was Royal oh, Rangers. So cool. My mom and dad were super involved in that. Uh -huh. And we were at a Royal Ranger Rama. And <laughs> at the end of the evening, I can, we were in this huge field. And I remember the music was playing mm. and just being filled with the Holy Spirit completely oh. and speaking in tongues, tears rolling down my That's face so at cool. a really young age, right? Wow. It, yeah, it That's was really amazing. Super. It was super. <laughs> super neat. So, um, so I also, the church that I grew up in, uh, whenever missionaries would come, mm. and that was quite often, right. um, everything would shut down. Right. Like there were no other activities. Okay. Everything shuts down. Everyone goes into the main sanctuary. Because they have amazing stories. Oh, absolutely. <gasps> and so as a little stories. girl, that was my favorite part of going to church. I loved going in. I loved the dress that they would wear. I loved the items that they would bring for us to look at. I loved the stories about what God was doing all over the world. And I just, I knew then, and I was like, you know, I really feel like God wants me to be a missionary. That's so cool. So, um, so you know, fast forward into the teenage years, I'm serving the Lord, I'm involved in all kinds of stuff, I've got a great relationship going on with God, and um, I know that I probably had lied to my parents before. Oh. But at about age 14, age 15, I remember a very significant big lie. Oh. And I believe that that was the little crack mm. that the enemy sought and, and just snuck in. And it was wow. like, okay, you get, you get away with it one time. Right. And then you get away with it again. Did you feel like your heart was sort of getting hard and you weren't letting the Lord in anymore? No, I know? was just starting to lead a very double life. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I think I was, a lot of people do. Yeah, I was very still involved in church. I was on youth council, the whole nine yards. Right. But, and yet... And yet I started to rebel. I started to get into stuff that, uh, you know, right. clearly was not God's plan for right. my life. <laughs> so, like that, a lot of us yeah. when we were kids, you know, and, and you manage that. You yeah. manage that very well for mm -hmm. a little time. Mm -hmm. And then one thing leads to something more severe right. and right. even more horrible choices. And um, yeah, it was during my, my probably my sophomore and junior year of high mm -hmm. school very much leading a double life. Um, That's hard. It was so hard. hard. It was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything kind of blew up mm -hmm. when I had to tell my parents at the age of 17 that I was pregnant. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And they had no clue. No clue. Wow. No clue. And you know, for our, aud for our audience, the things that God asks us not to do uh, we call it sin. We, we, yeah. we clump all those together in sin, but honestly, it's just stuff that's destructive. Right. Jesus said that he, he had created the world so that we'd have joy abundantly, and that yeah. he wanted us to have great life. But there are things, choices in this life that we can have that are super destructive. 
to us and can yeah. and can really uh, thwart God's destiny uh, or certainly at least delay it. And these are the things that God asks us to stay away from. Anything that's destructive towards us. Yeah. So that's what you're talking about. Is you're oh, walking absolutely. in some destructive behavior. Really bad. And then, right. And, and yeah. yet, half of you is still wanting to follow Jesus and the right. other half is not. Is not. Oh, yeah. that's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we've all done it right? at one time or another. Yeah. Well, and and so a month before I turned 18, mm -hmm. I had our first son. And uh, and about a year and a half later, along came our second son. Oh. Here's kind of a surprise. Uh -huh. you know? and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm not going to go back to college just yet. That's right. It was a different day and age 30 years oh, ago, yeah, you know? Definitely. Um, well, for anybody with two young children, right? that's pretty hard to go to college right, too. Right, right, right. <laughs> Um, and not long after our second son was born, my dad passed away about a oh. month later. Oh, wow. And I think our, our, our family just kind of <sighs> fell apart. Gosh, I have seen that again yep. and again. One of the parents goes home and it is, it's a huge change. Yeah. And it was devastating. Oh, yeah. And, um... I, I started making even more bad choices mm. and getting into drugs. And oh. I can tell you, Cindy, that by the grace of God, I never had my children taken away from me. Oh, and so only wonderful. by the grace of God, because there were certainly many, many reasons and times that they probably should have been right. taken out of my care. Right, right. Um, so and anyway. God yeah. had mercy. God had mercy. And you know, it's not like the Lord doesn't understand. Right. He understands when we get, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, uh, this life can be really hard. We were really created to live in a garden and name animals. So <laughs> here we are out in this fallen <laughs> world with right? all of this um, angst. And you know, uh, I happen to be a um, certified state peer um, support counselor for um, addiction uh, and uh, one of the big things is that people self-medicate when they are yeah. hurting yeah and so here your dad your precious father goes home to heaven yeah and um, these kinds of things happen but God understands he does doesn't he yes he does and you know I, I'm thankful that my faith in Christ was so strong that mm. even though I was not walking with mm. the Lord or on that path that He had chosen for me, mm -hmm. um, and I was making all of these horrible decisions and Looking getting in for love in all the wrong places. Seriously, and, <laughs> seriously. Like song. Um, <laughs> you know, I never had that feeling like, "Hey, I didn't believe in God." Right. I never lost my faith in who Jesus is. Right. Um, and actually, I really believed that if I were to have died during that time, I still would have been eternity in heaven with mm -hmm. the Lord. Um, because again, you know, God knows our hearts. He does. And He knows uh, the struggles that we all he face does. here. He does. Yeah. I'm so thankful that He uh, is so amazingly merciful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So, um, so if I end up moving up to Oregon. Okay. So you were in California at this time. I was time, in California right? at this time. Needed to get out of California because of all of the bad choices right, that I right. was making. And usually it's a bad group of people and things yeah. too a lot of times. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So I did the geographical mood. Good for right? you. And, that was wise. And it worked. And, yeah. and it was very, very helpful. But I still wasn't going back to church. Right. Um, but about 22, 23 years ago, I had a conversation with my brother. Mm. And all he said to me one day was, you know, now that you have kids, you mm. really, it's your job to get them into church. Mm. It's really your job. You really need to expose them to church. And mm. so... And some, did he mean that expose them to Jesus? Yes. By, you know, yeah, okay. by going to church. Mm -hmm. And I think just something snapped mm. in my mind. And I was like, you know what? You're probably right. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking for a church and found one. And um, about 20 years ago, I would say when I was 
Well, when I was 30, mm -hmm. I completely rededicated my life to the Lord. Uh, and He uh, waits for us. He, he does. He does. And, you know, I think the other thing that, that I've been thinking an awful lot about over the last month or so is, um, you know, God promises to restore the years the locusts have eaten. He does. He does. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. And honestly, he's the only one who could do it. Absolutely. Because he's not bound by time. Right. We are. Yes. He isn't. And he, he isn't. totally is. And that's really cool. So cool. And so, um, when my husband and I got married, mm -hmm. he was not a believer. Ah. And so, after many, many years of prayer mm -hmm. from lots of different people, of course. Uh, he came to know the Lord in 2012. Mm. And shortly thereafter, uh, our good friends, Robin, Robin and Carlos Roddy, uh -huh. who are missionaries down in Argentina, oh, how wonderful. had come to the church to speak. And I was like, oh, come on, Scott, come with me. It's the first time he had ever heard from a missionary before that I'm aware of. Right. And something just triggered in him. And they were offering to have a, a team a mission team come into Argentina. Oh, wow. And so so two, how long ago was this now? This would have been 2012 that okay. they were here in Medford. Oh, okay, very But cool. our first mission trip together to Argentina was in 2013. Oh, how fun. And then about two and a half, three months later, uh, I was in Haiti. And then oh in October goodness. of that same year, I was in Haiti again. That's so cool. And since 2013, we, I personally have been back to Haiti eight times. That's so cool. And we've been back to Argentina. So We took cool. a team to Cuba. Yes, we, I heard that. Yes. So cool. So here you are. Wait, yeah. And you were a little girl. Seriously. Seven or eight years yeah. old. Yeah. And you go through all of this angst and all of this trauma and and, and all of, of getting lost yeah. in the world and losing your way and then finding your way back and he gives you back. He gives me back. Your original, original. destiny and he dream. Does. Yeah. He does. Yes. He gives us our original mm -hmm. destiny and dreams. There is no one that can steal your destiny and That's your right. dreams. The Lord, did you know, I, a lot of people don't know that, the Bible says that the Lord actually has a book written with His dreams for us in it. Each one of us has a book that He has written His dreams for us. That's how much He loves really us awesome. and knows us. So and awesome. um, it's, He's not bound by time. It, I love how you said, no matter what has mm -hmm. happened to you, no matter what's been done to you, what you've done to others, no matter how much you have lost your way, mm -hmm. there is not any mountain high enough, no pit deep enough, no no ocean wide enough Amen. that you can get away from the love of God. Amen. It's absolutely true. And so here you are. And here I am. So, so, uh, yeah. so tell us a little bit about the things that God has done in your life in, in some of these countries you've gone to. Oh my goodness. Well, um, and I know your love and affection for the Haitian people. Mm -hmm. And we've, Scott and I have been to some pretty great, amazing places, but there's something about Haiti. It's it is. like there's just a piece of your heart. Yes. When you're called, you're called. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, as you know, it's mm -hmm. not an easy country to navigate. No. No. <laughs> and <laughs> unlike other areas of the world where you see pockets of poverty. Right. I mean, it's just so prevalent right. and in your it face. Is. It's really sad. But you get under that surface mm -hmm. and the people, the are, people are amazing they are so yeah. precious they really really are downtrodden end of a terrible government <laughs> the government just struggles yeah. and then of course they have with any of these third world governments there's all of this fraud going on right. and it is really really difficult but it's tough but in spite of that the haitian people are kind and they really are and, and so appreciative yeah. of everything. Yeah. So tell me, what are you doing in Haiti? What is the, your kind of so, major thrust there? What am I doing in Haiti? Um, I am part of an organization, a nonprofit called Unforgotten Project. I love that title. I know, so it's really good. good. Thank it you, Amanda Pettit. Good. I got a shout out to uh -huh, Amanda because right. that was her brainchild. Yeah, oh, it's so cool. Um, so it's kind of a long story, but I'll try and give it to you in a nutshell. Okay. I'll give you the condensed version. Okay. Uh, the the Pettits, 
uh -huh. our family from the Rogue Valley. Right. And they were called into the mission field several years ago. I knew them years and years and years ago. Yeah. I got to pray with them. Uh, it's so fun. In a crisis in their life, I got I was called to their house to pray for them. Oh one time. wow! And then to see them just go radical gangbusters Seriously. for Jesus. Yeah. Seriously. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. And they are still going radical gangbusters <laughs> for Jesus. Yeah. You know, I'm so proud of both of them. Steve yeah. And they are amazing. amazing people. They are amazing. They really are. A blessing. Um, they were in El Salvador, serving the Lord. Right. And just after the earthquake, they were called to go into Haiti and oversee. Wow work in witness teams for right. the Nazarene okay. Church, right? Oh, that's so wonderful. I have yeah. to say the Nazarene Church sent a lot of help into it Haiti does. and made really, really a real difference. They weren't just, there's, they're honestly, <laughs> yeah. we work overseas. So uh, sometimes there are some of these big organizations right. that, I mean, there isn't, a, there isn't a crisis they can't make a buck on. But uh, the Nazarene Church actually goes in yeah. and a number of the other uh, fellowships like that yeah. really go in and make a difference and, and really, really bring in true help. And that's wonderful. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, so while they were in Haiti, Amanda lost a part. A huge chunk of her heart there. Oh yes, it's hard not to. It's hard Haiti. not to. It's amazing. Yeah, and um, one time they had a uh, uh, college team coming as oh. a work and witness trip, oh, yeah. and the and the college had, team had a thousand dollars for okay. their project money. Okay. And she was like, "What in the world are we going to do with a thousand dollars?" Doesn't go very far. In it Haiti. doesn't go very far. <laughs> And little Pastor Frankel, who you know, yes. says, well, I happen to know of a little church up in this village. Yes, through, oh my goodness, oh, I've yeah. been on that You've road. been there. Crazy, You've been there, crazy, right? crazy, crazy road um, to get up there. So, so he goes, I have this little church. Maybe the team could go there and paint it. It's so cool. And, and so, did, the, did the team know what they were going to go through to get there? No. Oh, I mean, my this, goodness. Was, this was, you know, years <laughs> before I even got to go. Oh, okay. Um, so this was like... So this is yeah. like, so Haiti is a mountain. It's, it's quite mountainous. Yeah. Oh, you go know. ahead and describe yeah. it. Yeah, and, it's And it's so fun. I went with them one time, and I'm like, sure, I'll come up. I want to see the Unforgotten right? Project. This, this uh, project they've been working on, it was like a couple of years ago, they've been working for on it for several years. Yeah. By the time I got there, I'm like, I'll follow you. So I get in my little... Uh, uh, Terrius, right? The right. Terrius. And I'm following them. And they go over these mountains and down, and they're, we're driving in this dry it's river true, bed. Right? And then up these crazy mountains. Oh, my goodness. It is, uh, it is a trek. It's it, a trek. It, it is a trek just <laughs> to get there. It, is, uh, it, was, it was quite the adventure. I felt like a belly goat. <laughs> yes. But, you know, what's so amazing about the people, especially up in Lestique area, mm -hmm. is Lestique. The Lestique. Mm -hmm. They are not down in Port-au-Prince. No. So they're not affected by a lot of what most Haitians are affected by. Right. And their hearts are just so open and, and so, so soft. soft and, and it's just... Yeah. And they're, so when Amanda went there to check it out for the college team, right? right. Uh, one of the things that she noticed is that this community cared about each other and that mm. they weren't waiting around for somebody to come and help them. Right. They were doing things to try to, with the limited, limited resources that they had, right? Right. right. So they, the team goes up there, everything happens fine. Right. And uh, Amanda and Steve come home, right. stateside, and Amanda just can't shake this. Oh, the call. The call. That's a thing that's so cool. Yeah. It's just like when you were seven or eight, you get this call. Not everyone is called to missionary. Some people are called to, you know, we're working on putting together a, a recovery center here in the valley. Some people are called to that. Some people are called to, right. you know, all kinds of different things. And um, and yet, um, you get this call, this love of go. God flowing through you. Sure. Not only does His love fill you, but it overflows out yeah. to other people around you. And it's one of the things I just love about uh, the Lestique story is that um, is that you guys get called up to this really, really remote area and remote, this remote right? um, uh, group of families yeah. and like a billy goat, you climb out. I mean, it really is, it is really a rather dangerous trek up and down and they still go there. That's the spot that they're called to yeah. because love goes. It, it just goes. Love yeah. does. Yeah. Love 
is something. Love does something. Yeah. Love is an yeah. action. And so you've had the Lord just forgive you and, and love you and redeem everything. And so that love just flows out of you all the time. Well, that's what it is. And I want people, yeah. those watching us, to know that no matter what happens mm -hmm. and what's ever happened to you, that that the Lord he sees you. Yes. He sees you. Yes. I'm telling you, He sees you. And mm -hmm. He still heals. He still Amen. delivers. He still restores. He, if you call on Him right now, He says, call on me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things you don't know. Mm -hmm. He said, if you call on me, I will come with you and sup with you. If you call on me, He said, I will answer you. Yeah. It, 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 I'm telling you, it's true. You get on your knees tonight, and no matter what anybody's ever said, no matter what you've ever thought, uh, and you cry out to Him, He will meet you. It's true. Just like He did for you. Yeah, it's absolutely 100% true. And He remembered what you loved as a little girl. Siri, yes. So he remembers yes. even what we yes. love. I mean, he just, it, it, it's his a merciful, gracious love yeah. is unbelievable. Mm. I mean, it is absolutely so overwhelming. It really is. It really is. Yes, and, and I know when you said to me that you wanted the things that were on your heart was that 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 no one is ever beyond None. the point of redemption, that he loves you. Yeah. I'm telling you, you just turn to him. You yeah. call on him. You mm -hmm. call on him. He will answer you. All the stuff that, that might need to be taken care of, he sends his Holy Spirit. He's yeah. got, you know, it's got angels, 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 a host of angels, warring angels, angels of, uh, of, of all kinds of deliverance and healing that he sends even to, uh, to love on you and to deliver mm. you and to heal you. Oh my goodness, I've seen, I've seen every, kind of, every kind of healing. I've seen uh, blind eyes open, deaf ears open. I've seen uh, lives that were destroyed. Uh, brought back again. I've seen memories restored. I've seen AIDS healed. I've seen cancers healed. I've seen, I just the other day, um, someone uh, who owed me some money and hadn't paid, finally we got together and I found out when she came to give me the check that her husband was sick. And so I said, me, I pray for, your, pray, mm. pray for your husband. I get to lay hands on her husband. She she sends me a note uh, not very long after that said when he got to the hospital, there was nothing. They had done all these tests and there was all this stuff wrong with his heart. But when he got to the hospital, after I got done praying for him, he was completely healed because our God That's heals. Awesome. That Jesus is so awesome. Christ yes. is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. He heals. He loves to heal. He loves to heal. He delivers. Yeah. He saves. Well, if you accept him, as, he, as your Lord and your Savior, mm. that means you just turn your life over to Him. You repent of your sins and you tell Him you love Him and you're going to follow Him. Mm -hmm. Then He will save you, redeem you in every way. He loves you. I'm telling mm. you, isn't that right? It's absolutely. Absolutely. He yeah. loves you and I, so much.